frustration that is in the heart of the average believer as to why their Christian experience does not seem to produce results. You see, there are many believers who have done well in loving God, but the imminent frustration that stands before them as far as producing results that become consolations to their Christian experience is concerned, many believers are already brewing frustrations. You see what is happening all around from ritual killings to people falling into propositions of darkness. They are proof that there is a gradual frustration rising. I, I, I can be sure that if we talk to your pastor, he will tell you how that many Christians send text messages every day asking the question, why? Why is this thing not working? They would say, I have prayed. They would say, I fasted. They would say, I studied. They would say, I kept myself. They would say all kinds of things. Why does it look like God lied? Here and there, they see a few people, a few ministries, a few territories distinguish themselves in power and in grace. But corporately speaking, there is a gradual cry rising from preachers, rising from businessmen, rising from individuals, rising from career people, that the more they study scripture, the more they seem to get angry because it looks like the Bible is a compendium of a scam. And if we do not rise by the privilege of God's grace, to show the body of Christ the way by the spirit I assure you that soon our churches will be full of idol worshippers not idol worshippers who are coming to Jesus to be saved but idol worshippers who have been frustrated because it looks like Jesus does not work but not in our lifetime in the name of Jesus Christ from the rising of the sun to the setting of the sun, your name is to be hallowed. The setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. I don't from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. tonight trusting that you will pour upon us something from heaven we have come oh God as a people who are desperate for more desperate for encounters that produce results that work we have come to bring before you from our alabaxa boxes not just our value but our frustrations we put them in that box we put our confusions and we break them at your feet trusting oh god that we will not return the way we came therefore let the spirit of revelation be poured upon us tonight 
in the name of Jesus Christ, stir up a fire from within our spirits and let Jesus be glorified. In Jesus' name, I pray. Please be seated and let me plead with you. I want you to pay rapt attention to what you are about to hear within the few minutes. I'm sharing the passion of your man of God to open this to us. When I prayed for this meeting, the Lord put this in my heart. And I know that I'm speaking to the body of Christ and speaking to a global audience. Wherever you are, from whatever nation, I want you to pay attention. It takes light. Listen, listen. There is nothing that empowers like light. High level spiritual illumination. It says God made many lights, but he made two great lights. One great light to rule in the day and the other to rule in the night. Are we together? Nothing empowers like light. Let me start by telling you this. That God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. It is within his power to birth glory out of the saints. The Bible is full. It is a compendium of the possibilities of God scattered from generation to generation. In fact, John chapter 20, when you read the last verse, here's what it says. It says, many miracles did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. He said, but these were recorded. That means there were many more. Only God knows what more Jesus did that was not recorded in this book. He said, but this was recorded that we might believe in Jesus, not that we might just look at it and that in believing we might have life through his name. Are we together? We must understand that this faith experience that we have come into is not just a religious experience purported by a founder called Jesus. It's not one of the over 4,000 religions and growing that we have across the globe. We have been called into a life of infinite possibilities only limited by the power of the one who called us. Are we together? Yes. But the reason why believers may never come into this experience of the power of God unassisted is because the structure, listen carefully, the structure and the administration of the life of God demands that knowledge precedes results. The very structure of the build-up of this kingdom demands that knowledge must forerun results. Results will never forerun knowledge in this kingdom. That means the moment you encounter Christ in that experience of the new birth, the very next assignment is that through the coordinated ministry of the word of God and the Holy Spirit, you are led through a phase of transformation, renewal, and empowerment, even by the Spirit. This is the hardest and the longest journey for the believer because in that process of transformation, you begin by a reorientation of your understanding. Are we together now? The Bible says in Romans chapter 12 from verse 1 and 2, I beseech thee, brethren, he says, by the mercies of God, that ye offer your bodies unto God, holy and acceptable. He calls it your reasonable act of service. Verse 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, is the Greek word aeon, the thinking pattern that is associated with this system. He says, but be ye transformed by the renewing, of your mind are we together now yes Acts chapter 20 I think is verse 32 it says and now brethren I commend you to God 
is a handover service. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace. He said it is able to, number one, build you up. It doesn't give you anything yet. It builds you up. Then, he says, it gives you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Why do you have to be built up? Because an heir, for as long as he's a child, he says he differed not from a slave, even though he be lord of all. It takes knowledge. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18. It says, having their understanding darkened. It says, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their minds. Are we together? The Bible challenges believers to pursue knowledge. Pursue knowledge. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was praying over the church in Colossae. And he prayed that they would sustain three dimensions of knowledge. He says, I pray for you and desire that you might be filled with number one, the knowledge of his will. Number two, all wisdom. Because wisdom is dimensional. And then number three, spiritual understanding. So why then do we have believers who love Jesus? Sincere believers, serious believers. And yet our Christian experiences seem to be barren. Now I'm not just speaking um, to this church alone. I'm speaking to the body of Christ. So this, this teaching stretches across. Why do we have people who love Jesus with all their hearts? And yet their lives is a capture of disappointed experiences that continue to misrepresent the God they so propose. You would not come to anybody in the presence of utter failure. Are we together? No wonder many believers are now beginning to resort to the things we once left. Traditional practices. What credence do we have to say stop going there until we can show an alternative with proofs? When Jesus came, watch his manifesto. He walked to the people and he told them repent for the kingdom is at hand. And he demonstrated the superiority of that kingdom there and then. In fact, in the account of Luke, Luke's synoptic account, when you read from verse 4, the Bible says he came into the temple and the scroll of Isaiah that was talking about him was given to him. Then he began to read the messianic prophecy of Isaiah 61, that the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he said, for he hath anointed, the word anoint means to ordain, to authorize an operation. To legitimize an operation. He has legitimized me to preach glad tidings to the meek. He had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted. Is that true? To set the captives free. And when he said all those things, he closed it and said, This day, when? This day is this scripture fulfilled. That means that theory, I have come as an explanation to something about God. And he saw a man whose hand was withered. And he said, stretch your hand. It was not just about miracles. It was a demonstration of an alternative kingdom that has come superior. Are we together? Hear me. I've been doing a series with my people that... Results are also evangelists. There is a kind of gospel that only results can preach. Are we together now? Yes. The territory has been commanded to listen to certain evangelists. Unfortunately, you are not the one. The result that comes as a result of the workings of the spirit is also an evangelist. And it preaches powerfully. You go and ask the people in scripture who had one manifestation of result. One result in Gadara brought 10 cities in a moment. One encounter with the woman at the well brought so many people to Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 we have a few minutes wherever we stop we'll pray stand ye in the ways he said and see 
and ask for the old parts. That means the secret of tomorrow is in yesterday. Something about yesterday holds the key to tomorrow. Where is the good way? He says, and walk therein, and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk therein. Let me talk on a few minutes. Very, very few minutes. Just a charge, really. Are we together now? Yes. I'm teaching tonight on the power of spiritual patterns. The power of spiritual patterns. Therein lies the keys that command consistent, ever-increasing supernatural results that are able to, number one, bring glory to the name of Jesus, and number two, bring honor to the saints. You have to realize that there is a dimension of kingdom advance that depends on the results of the saints. If your pastor and his dear wife did not have results, believe me, in addition to your love for him, you most likely would come here discouraged. I saw all of you motivated and jumping and rejoicing. You know why? Two reasons. One, because you sincerely love your pastor and his wife. But two, because your eyes, I was listening to the song of my dear people, the worship team, and they were singing so boldly. Results emboldened because they know they are not lying. The greatest way to market is to tell the truth. Is that true? Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Thank you, Jesus. Please read with me if you can see it projected. Ready? One, two, read. And Moses said, uh-huh, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. Uh-huh. And the glory of the Lord shall appear. One more time, please. The glory of the Lord is a capture of everything that makes him God. Comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa. The essence is the weightiness of a thing. That means for you to know the glory of a thing, you have to explore everything that makes that thing wonderful. The glory of a phone, we have to vet the glory of that phone by checking the features and the abilities. Are we together? So the glory of God is a representation of everything that makes God, God. His goodness, his power, his wisdom, everything. And he says that if you desire to see the glory of God appear, it's always been there. But if you want to see it appear, there is a protocol to experiencing the glory of God, manifesting as wisdom, manifesting as prosperity, signs and wonders, influence, etc. Now, most believers, listen carefully, most believers know what they want, but they do not know what it takes. The kingdom mysteries connecting desires to manifestation. This is where there is a gap of ignorance in the body of Christ. So there are all kinds of beliefs in the body of Christ. Don't worry, one day God will do it. Don't worry, one day things will work out well. I don't have all the time. I would have shown you from Genesis chapter 4. When you read from verse 1 to 7, just write it for reference. The Bible talks about two brothers there. Cain and Abel, the first manifestation of the power of spiritual patterns that we see. The intent was to offer up sacrifices. Is that true? And they demanded a response from God. And two of them had the liberty to explore their strategy as to how they wanted the presence and the glory of God to come. The Bible says Cain did his thing and Abel did his thing. And the Bible says, your Bible says God had respect for the sacrifice of Abel. 
the glory of the Lord came upon that sacrifice and Cain was wrought. Let's go to verse 6 and 7 for sake of time. The Lord said unto Cain, Why art thou wroth? Why art thou angry? Why is thy countenance fallen? Read verse 7 with me, please. If thou doest well, shall... Hold on, just stop there. This is a very powerful statement. He's saying, I did not receive it because it came from Abel. I received it because I saw compliance to patterns. Are we together now? For running every manifestation of the glory of God are spiritual mysteries called patterns. Let me tell you what patterns are. Patterns are defined spiritual pathways. A pattern is a spiritual modus operandi a predefined formula for obtaining certain results. Patterns guarantee consistency of results. Are we together? Yes. Let me give you a quick example. Do we have any architect here? Anyone at all? Any architect? Beautiful. Sir, let me ask you a question. Is it possible to reproduce this beautiful building anywhere in the world? Is that true? Do you have to carry the building? Can you put this in UK? Can you reproduce this in US? What do you need? You don't have to carry the building walking out with it. You can reproduce this building with digital precision to a point that if they blindfold you now and carry you to the other building, you will think you are still here. That is the power of patterns so when believers are not able to capture results number one it is not location number two it is not civilization all of the flimsy excuse that continue to justify failure and mediocrity are not it at all the one explanation as to why the Christian experience of many believers remain barren and a plethora of frustrations is because we have not sustained the intelligence to understand patterns there is a pattern for salvation is that true question let me use one person for example is it possible sir let me use you are you saved don't be embarrassed my apologies are you saved how are we sure this man is saved what are we going to use to verify his salvation we will have to vet what pattern you followed to be saved is that true because it's not written on him. So if you tell me you are saved, I will go further to say, how were you saved? Then my ears and my spirit is attentive to John chapter, to Romans 8, 10 from verse 8 to 10. Is that true? If you tell me you confess the Lordship of Jesus, you believed in your heart, then I know that you have walked in keeping with that pattern. Any other explanation you give me, I have a right based on my knowledge of the pattern for salvation to say you are not saved. Do you agree with me? Please sit, sir. The Bible is a compendium of different expectations alongside the spiritual patterns that lead to them. So, whether it is empowerment, whether it is increase, whether it is speed, whether it is restoration, whether it is influence, whether it is impact, whether it is resurrection. Do you know why the Bible has a lot of stories? Because hidden in those stories, if you have the eyes that see, it is more than a story. Why do we listen to testimonies? We already know the end result, but why do we allow the people narrate it? Because we are not only studying results, we are getting familiar with what patterns. Are we together now? Yes. So a medical doctor, six or seven years before he's been conferred with the degree, is a naive individual with only a desire, and he's taken to an institution that is the authorized body that dispenses the patterns. That individual is not yet sure if he will be a doctor, but then he just knows that I have the zeal. And every day, every week, week becomes months, months become years. Is that true? And he gets to a point in that practice where there is no return. Even before he is done, they can begin to call him a doctor because practically there is nothing left. He exhausts an exact body of truth and at the end, when vetted by the university, 
they call him doctor his size did not change his voice did not change his appearance did not change what changed he was given certain things so when the doctor is talking to you and he says narrate your problems while you are rambling and shouting he's not looking for your stories there are patterns he can know with precision that this is malaria and he can write the drug and not have to see you again and he's sure come back after three days if for any reason he misses it he can say oh that continuation of the trouble is also a symptom of something bigger and he can check it if you pay attention to what I'm teaching you tonight you will rise to a level of mastery in the spirit that you will marvel and wonder at your results first and foremost do not let anyone downplay the importance of results in your Christian experience results are a consolation to you the believer and then it equips you with with the potency to preach Jesus preaching a barren Jesus will lead you to frustration our world is too busy too wicked and too selfish to pay attention to any message that does not have proof by its side are we together in Acts chapter 4 when the, the disciples were called at the Jerusalem council the man who had been healed at Gate Beautiful was standing before them and they wanted to punish the disciples but they said what can, hey, this is a notable miracle standing before us what then do we say about it patterns are prescribed spiritual pathways for obtaining results can I tell you sincerely anytime you see consistent predictable results it is no longer by luck there is a spiritual pattern when God wants to give you a blessing he does not give you physical things when God wants to truly honor you, he grants you access to high level spiritual illumination so that you will find the patterns. And when you find it, you can rejoice even in the midst of nothing because you have found what brings everything. May someone find something tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. Unfortunately, we live in a world that has no respect for the sacrifices of men as far as finding patterns is concerned. Do you know why we honor men? We don't honor men just because of them. We honor the sacrifice of the spiritual investment, the stamina, the staying power, the pain, the blood, that they stayed there, the endurance until they found the patterns. When they found it, they brought it out and now give it free. This is what your man of God does. You see that now. So when you celebrate a man of God, it's not human worship. The Bible says, let them that rule well be counted for double honor. Unfortunately, we live in a world where when you see predictable, ever increasing results, we say things like, he's lucky, they are lucky, it's just God. Are we together? Everybody can run, but nobody wins by mistake. You don't need skill for performance. You just need passion. But for winning and for victory, it says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully. For someone, God brought you to this meeting tonight to open you up to see that it is not that God is unfaithful. Desire is important, but it's not the only key for victory. Proverbs 18 and verse 1, through desire, a man having separated himself, desire brings you to that point of separation, but it says that you intermeddleth with all wisdom. Are we blessed? Hear me. You want to produce results in your life? It is not by luck. There are keys of the kingdom. They are called patterns. Called patterns. We are not the first to use them. Many have used them and subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, shot the mouth of lions. Women received their dead back to life. They went to heaven, but they left the patterns. 
hidden in archives that only meekness and the help of the spirit can unveil can I tell you this this Bible you see is a compendium of spiritual patterns but it takes more than an educated mind to see it Isaiah 29 let me show you something verse 11 your name is to be hallowed look up please and the vision of all is become unto you like the words of a book that is sealed notice what is wrong with the book the book is what not closed sealed which men deliver to one who is learned or educated saying read this i pray thee what is his response i cannot read it why it is open but it is sealed just because you open it does not mean you are seeing anything there there is a seal next verse verse 12 and the book is also delivered to him who is not learned he said read this i pray thee and he said i cannot i'm not even educated in the first place there is a realm where both the educated and the uneducated stand helpless until the seal is broken many of you have been carrying a book that is opened but whose scrolls are not unlocked so he says open down my eyes that i may behold he was not he was not a blind man praying that prayer said what seest thou and he said the rod of an almond tree he said you have seen correctly are we together now please hear me world over everywhere you see unusual dimensions of results in this kingdom they are products of interacting with a realm that is outside of this three-dimensional realm whether it is demonic or it is godly there is a limitation to what the three-dimensional realm can deliver. The moment you see unusual results, it is safe to suspect the producer of that result. Either that he has had an encounter with Jesus or he has had an encounter with something that is not human. But there are results that cannot be produced by humans. Is someone learning? Genuine salvation has a spiritual pattern. That is why everybody in the world can be saved. Regardless the tribe, I don't need to learn English or Igbo or Yoruba or French to be saved. With my own language, once I subscribe to the pattern, I can be saved. There is a pattern for spiritual growth. You don't just grow arbitrarily. No. You can know you are growing and you can know you are not growing. Not by guesswork, by following the patterns. Is that true? There are indices we look out for. You cannot give birth to a child and start flogging the child from that night and say, what kind of a child are you? It's 12 hours and you are not walking. No, because there is a law called the law of process. The law of process demands that patience be given to you. But after two years, if the child does not walk, something is wrong. Is that true? It is safe to go to the doctor now and find out because that child's not working after two years is violating a pattern. Are we together? We respect patterns so much we have built institutions to identify them. We call them hospitals. We call them law courts. These are all institutions that help to, to keep patterns. When someone becomes rich and not by honor, not by grace, not by labor, you can take the person to court and there is a prison where those who try to compromise on patterns are kept. Do you agree with me? An armed robber, why does an armed robber point a gun at you and you gave to the armed robber and yet you still want the armed robber arrested? You gave. But what was wrong with that kind of giving? <laughs> are we together would you say you were a giver in the presence of that arm robber but something left you to him 
So what then is giving? Is it really the act of releasing something? Are you seeing the reason why many people give and give and give? And nothing happens. That's for another day. I'm just showing you that there is a pattern. Because both Cain and Abel gave. One thing common between two of them is there was a giving. There are spiritual patterns that control wealth and abundance. This wealth and abundance that has become a serious issue. Two dimensions to it. There are those who trivialize it and say it doesn't matter. I wish you a safe journey. You just live long enough. You will find out the importance of wealth and abundance to the overall journey of the believer. Then there are those who are obsessed about it and Jesus is defamed and diminished with respect to their passion to having it. And the tragedy is that both will not get it. The miraculous is governed by patterns. The testimonies that you enjoy in this church, you see, one thing with mastery is that the, the, the thing about mastery is that because the laws have been mastered, the execution looks so flawless. It would take the eyes of the spirit to see what rules are being kept. Is that true? But believe me, if you watch a professional drive, he can be driving and before you know it, he's done more than 10 things and yet you didn't see it. Because of, you can see a learner struggling, step one, step two. But when you watch a professional, he can be talking, he himself can forget what he's doing. Yet he still did it. The car was not designed to respect him. The car was designed to respect patterns. The car does not care whether it was a male and female, a Nigerian or an Australian that drives it. The car was not built to respect men. It was built to respect patterns. If a sincere person holds the steering wrong, it will still enter the ditch. Because the car was not built on emotions. It was built on patterns. Please pay attention to what I'm showing you. Because the Spirit of God is going to be speaking to you. You'll be seeing why. Look at the gaps in my Christian experience. Tonight is a night of honesty. To open up your heart. Not to condemn yourself. But to say, look, my life has got to produce results. I can tell you results are preachers. They can preach a message like no other. Are we together? And we're living in days when the world is tired of a theoretical Jesus. The world is tired and frustrated because Satan is marketing and pushing options. Options. When you say God now world over, it means many things. So there has to be a people who will give credence and definitions to that name. That's why I sang that song. There must be a people who can show the possibilities that are captured in this faith life in a way that is consistent and ever increasing. Here's how the Bible puts it. John chapter 15 and verse 8. He said, Herein is my Father glorified. When ye bear much fruit. Everybody say much fruit. God does not want scanty, amateur results that cannot be reproduced. So you, uh, you come for a meeting as a man of God and somehow you know the sick were healed. Even you, you can't tell what happened. And in the next meeting, it looks like you're a herbalist. You are not sure of what happened again. Then another meeting, sinners are saved. Then another meeting after that, you see the place you can discern that there are unbelievers. And you finish preaching and you are almost crying because nobody comes out for an altar call. Listen, we must move past the realm of guessing. There is a lot of ignorance and uncoordinated knowledge in the body of Christ. So you find out that if an average believer is plagued with a situation, that average believer cannot even defend the pathway he will follow to victory. He will do things like prayer, obviously. He will do things like fasting. He will do things like sowing a seed. He will do things like touching and agreeing the blood of Jesus. He does not know which one leads to what. So the danger is that one of them will walk, but you cannot help others rise because you are not even sure of what you did. 
Okay, so if this man says I was healed, can you reproduce that same result? That is how to be a blessing. Are we together? Job 38 and verse 33. God asks Job a question that he's asking us tonight. Are you ready? One, two, read, please. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven? That's question one. Don't rush the question. This is God asking, Job, do you know the ordinances of heaven? You know what the ordinances are? The rules that regulate heaven, that makes heaven the way it is. Question two, it says, can thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? That means, can you reproduce it? Job, don't you think heaven is just heaven? There are rules. There are patterns. Listen, when Lucifer rebelled, God never got up from his throne, yet rebellion was, was judged. What pattern is that? When you understand that pattern, you can be a leader and right from where you are. Rebellion can be judged without you coming there. Do you know the pattern? Listen, the pattern was captured in the Lord's prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy, is, it, is it not in your Bible? What is it about heaven that does not go old? What is it about the organization in heaven? Satan is not there yet. There is order. There are doors. There are gates. Everybody does not just walk into the throne room and walk out. No. The Bible gives us a description. And here he's asking Job. He's saying, Job, in an attempt to help you understand your predicament, do you know the ordinances of heaven? And canst thou establish the dominion thereof on earth? Our fathers who have joined the cloud of witnesses today, they spent their life shouting it. Earth, I have found something that controls healing. We ignore them. I have found something that controls prosperity. Isaiah 51 from verse 1 and 2. God himself recommends certain personalities that embody his possibilities. Let me tell you how God works. When a man enters a covenant with God and excels in his compliance, God now personifies that person to become an embodiment of his, that dimension of him. That means every time you want to, to get that dimension, he refers you to that person. So he calls himself the God of Abraham. The God of Abraham does not work like the God of Isaac. He's the same God. The God of Isaac does not work like the God of Jacob. Uh -uh. Are you learning something tonight? Verse 2, read with me. One to read. Look unto Abraham, your father, and to Sarah that bare you. For I called him, stop, stop. Why did he put a loan there? He's teaching you something. He's saying, this is my idea of a blessed man. Study him and start from when he was alone. I didn't call him with anything attached to his life. And then I blessed him. And then I did not stop at blessing him. I increased him. So a blessed man still needs increase. Are you learning now? That means if I want to become prosperous and I say, God, prosper me. He tells you, go back to the patterns. I have even helped you by personifying individuals who make it easy. Because men are also scriptures. The Bible calls us living epistles. You can walk with God in a way that if someone forgot to do his devotion in the morning, he does not feel bad when he sees you. You become a continuation of his Bible study. Your life is literally a spiritual project. Are we together? Your assignment is to use your lifetime and work with God so that you yourself can now become a reference. That if God has been trying to explain something to a man and he does not understand, he can tell him, come to streams of joy. Sit quietly and watch. 
in that watching he can say oh so this is what you are talking about hear me in God's dealing with men we are not given the liberty to invent our ways hear me when you are working with God creativity is not required is when you are now working in dominion it is dominion that needs creativity not followership followership needs alignment and yieldedness and obedience the path is already created you don't invent it follow them he says who through faith and patience have obtained have obtained Time will fail me, it says, to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. You are not the first to come. Listen, listen. The Bible says the things that are written are for time. They are for our learning. So that we, through the patience and the comfort of Scripture, might find hope. So if you came from a poor family with your parents as idol worshippers, the Bible says find comfort. Go to Scripture and check who is similar with your pattern. Go and read about Esther. Go and read about Gideon. What took a village girl from Shushan? And she became the one who sat over 127 provinces. Esther judged evil and never held a sword. Find out. Man of God, you are not the first to be called into ministry. And you are not the first to have failure in ministry. Go and read the Bible and see that the apostles, when they were disciples, they tried doing ministry and they were frustrated. The Bible does not hide their frustration. They came to Jesus and said, why couldn't we do this? Even his disciples couldn't do this. And Jesus gave them an answer. Study the answer. There is a pattern in that answer that can take away barrenness from ministry out of your life. What was the difference between one person who could not cast out demons and now his shadow? I'm here by the Spirit tonight that God will open our eyes and that this seal be unlocked and you will step into a level of wonder. You want to become an influence? Hear me, my dear people, you know this, that there is a mystery behind rising. You don't just rise like that. Our world is a selfish world. People are busy minding their business. Whatever will make them turn and focus on you must be a mystery. Can I tell you this? Nobody has the time to spend the rest of his life paying attention to you and your agenda. They also have their plans. Whatever makes them to pay attention to you must be a mystery. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be hallowed. wrapping up. I told you I just came to do a charge tonight so that we'll pray. Listen, you only succeed in this kingdom when you build according to pattern. Let me show you a few scriptures that help you. of God guarantee two things. Please write if you're writing. Number one, the patterns of God guarantee the glory of God. Let's look at Exodus chapter 40. Exodus chapter 40 for the sake of time. In fact, just, just be patient. Let's, let's look at Exodus 25. We'll look at verse 9 and then we'll look at 40. Please sit if you can for a minute. I'm sure you can't even remember you were standing. Exodus 25 from verse 9. Look up please. It says according to all that I show you. Read with me. After the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments. It says even so shall thou make it. Is it in your Bible? Go to verse 40 please. Go to verse 40. It says and 
40, yes. And look that thou make them after their pattern which was shown thee on the mount. That means when they wanted to make a heavenly tabernacle, God said, if it is me that you want to dwell there, you must reproduce my habitation there. You see, there's no time I would have taught you why Satan calls men his house and God too calls men his house. You remember in the Bible, there's still two of them called men their house. What is it about men? that qualifies to be a house to both God and Satan. Are we together? Yes. We are not glorifying Satan. But when you, people who go to Habalists and says, Mr. Habalist, I've suffered. I'm tired of suffering. I want my life to change. Usually the herbalist will not come to your house. He will ask you what your problem is. Is that true? Based on your problem, he will consult with mediums and they will deliver to that herbalist a pattern. Is that true? They will tell you you can attract good luck. You can attract favor in your shop. And they are not lying. But they will tell you there is a pattern. So their, their assignment is to simulate the environment in your life that can attract those forces. Is that true? So they give you things. You don't even know what they are and they need your... You don't know you are part of what they are mixing because your will is part of it. Your will is an ingredient that is being mixed too. So all you see is not all that is being mixed. Your will also is part of that concoction. Now you take it and drop it in your shop. Watch this. Like I said, I'm not glorifying Satan. Do you understand now? I'm just trying to reveal something. In a strange way, when you drop that thing, someone moves like they tied him with a rope. And comes to stand in front of your shop and you you are you are impressed because you know what is control now the person does not know what brought him the only challenge is that that pattern has a side effect because you see ah, how do I say this now that power that is working please don't un, don't misunderstand me that power that is working is working because it is the power of God. Listen. There are once have I spoken and all sit down, sit down, sit down. Twice have you heard that all power belongs to who? Now listen, let me tell you how it works. The power of God is broken in three levels. The first and the highest level is the power that comes through intimacy. When you have a direct relationship with God, there is a dimension of spiritual power. It is the highest level of spiritual power that can be given an individual. It comes through intimacy and encounters. Is that true? But there is a second level of the power of God. And that's where all men together with systems and principalities can use. It is his power that is programmed already in principles and patterns. You don't need a relationship for that dimension of power to be released. All you need is understanding. So, a native doctor can have a farm. Is that true? And he plants maize. Please answer me, will the maize grow? Is it his power? There is a principle already. Are we together now? When demons appear to people to help them, that's why Satan and demons don't need a relationship from you. You don't need to know the name of the herbalist. He's not interested in a relationship because it is not that level of power he's giving you. All he needs is obedience and compliance. Bring a goat, bring chicken, yes sir, and you give it and that's all. You may not even know where you went to. The third level of power is released through covenant alignment with a vessel that is in covenant with God. Once you come under that grace, there are people who were not givers but they started experiencing increase even before they understood it because they came under the covenant of one who is obeying and they were able to partake of that grace. Are you learning now? 
So it says, build according to pattern. Now, please give us Exodus chapter 40. My time is up. We're going to pray. My apologies. Exodus chapter 40. I hope God is challenging someone tonight. We'll start from verse 16. Then we'll go to 33 and 35. I'm showing you what happens, what you stand to enjoy as a believer when you subscribe to supernatural patterns. It says, thus did Moses... Help me, please. According to all that the Lord had commanded him, so did he. Go to verse 33, please. Moses is building a tabernacle now. And the glory of God does not come till the last pattern is adhered to. And he read up the court round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court. Read the last sentence. Ready? So Moses finished the work. Next verse, please, if you're a Christian. Ready? Then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation, and the glory of the Lord filled. Verse, next verse. That will be the last. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon, and the glory of the Lord you would just say Moses was lucky. Wow. God so loved Moses and came to dwell there. But I'm showing you that there was a pattern. Moses reproduced the throne room right there. And God said, all right, that's fine. I, whether I stay there or stay here is the same. So he came and stood there. Hear me. Favor is real. But there is a kind of person that favor was authorized to follow. When favor comes to you, it does not find that person, so it goes back. Waiting for you to become the person it was authorized to follow. Are we together now? When God wants to use you, there is a kind of person God is looking for. If it does not find that person, that anointing will not come. Even Satan is looking for a kind of person. You can donate yourself to him and say, no, no, I, I will oppress you, but I don't need you. There is someone I'm looking for. So they all have requirements. Psalm 89 verse 20, my time is up. Let me show you this. Read with me if you're a Christian. One to read. I have found David, my servant. Stop, 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 stop. You have to pray for the miracle of open eyes. You just read something there that is amazing. I have found David. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I found David a long time ago, but I was looking for my servant. For as long as he was David, I could not anoint him. Because I don't anoint David, I only anoint my servant. Are you learning now? So I have found you, but God is still waiting for my servant. That's why the anointing has not come. You keep telling him, anoint Joshua Selman. And he says, no, the anointing does not come on Joshua Selman. The anointing comes on my servant. So there is a transition from you to God's servant. The name given to that process is death. Death is what changes men from who they are to God's vessels. Are we together? Just this scripture alone can change your ministry forever. Because if you are waiting for the anointing to come on you, you are joking. The anointing is not designed to come on you. The anointing was designed to come on his servant. That is why it is servants that ride on horses. It's a mystery. of sonship is servanthood. Jesus demonstrated he was a son indeed by being a servant. Patterns reveal or create sustainability of results. The result that your pastor and his dear wife are having it is consistent because there is a pattern. Can I tell you this? My charge to you tonight is that you're going to be wasting your time and I say this with every sense of respect. 
you will be wasting your time if you are just hoping for things to happen you have to become that spiritual archaeologist from tonight Lord there is a pattern this favor I'm seeing on the life of my pastor why has it not come upon my life there is a pattern this dimension of the anointing that I desire you do not show favoritism there is a pattern why is my business small and not growing why am I not growing in my Christian experience? I open my Bible, yet I cannot see anything. I listen to messages, yet it falls on deaf ears. Could it be that there is a miracle that must happen? I want someone who will join me tonight within the one or two minutes I have to pray and cry unto the God of heaven. It is time to produce the kind of results that can be evangelists speaking to the purposes of God within this city, within this nation, and across the globe. Is someone praying? Enough of casual, resultless Christianity. Enough of guessing and shadow boxing. We can press into perfection, exactitude and precision in the spirit. Where you know that you know that you know he said for I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded someone pray I share the burden of your pastor and I pray all over the globe are you praying just in a minute or two lord i desire fruits results consistency i love you more than results i love you more than miracles i love you more than prosperity but i'm in a season in my christian experience where i need a consolation to my christian experience tired of talking about a god who cannot be defended by my results go ahead and pray. Do not allow your environment to eat. keep asking, who is this God? Who is Jesus? I hear he can walk miracles. Where is he today? I hear he can raise the dead. Where is he today? I hear he can bring increase. Pray. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, amen. Who is this King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle, the son of the living God I join faith with the angel over this house and I decree and declare every spiritual veil over your eyes that is stopping you from seeing and accessing higher and superior levels of light the same God that opened the eyes of his servant and showed him things I stretch my hand in the name of Jesus. May that grace for open eyes rest upon you now. I declare.
decree and declare, let the book be opened and let the seals be unlocked. In the name of Jesus Christ, access light by the Spirit, access wisdom by the Spirit, access understanding by the Spirit, gain mastery in the kingdom, gain mastery in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, hear me? The version of you that God is looking for in this season. May you evolve through light to that fashion in the name of Jesus Christ. And everything that represents barrenness in your Christian experience, I come by the rod of a higher priesthood. And in the name that is above all names, I decree and declare everything representing barrenness, it dies now in the name of Jesus. me many of you after tonight and in addition to all the graces you have received you will start having definite encounters from tonight where God will open you up and bring you to a point of mastery let that be so in the name of Jesus and alongside with every prophetic word that you have received all through this conference from the servants of the living God and the angel over your house, your father, I decree and declare, agreeing in faith with them, that this is the season of your appearing. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord bless you, the Lord increase you, in Jesus' name.